Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another beautiful morning that the sun is shining. It's going right in my eyes this morning. Now, I've just finished my breakfast. What have you guys been having for your breakfast today? I had a lovely slice of toast with honey, which is one of my favorites. Good morning to the Howells. Lovely to see you. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about bees. And what I thought I'd do is set you a little craft challenge. Now, this is relatively easy she says if you've got some wool to hand and we're gonna i'm gonna make some they're gonna be kind of like bees so all you need is a fork and some wool and i've gone for sort of bee like colors because i didn't have any black or brown so i've gone for a bit of yellow and orange and what you need to do is first of all just cut yourself um a length of one of your bits of string um, well, maybe about that long. I'm going to just tilt the screen a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so with my fork, I want the, I want the wool to be sort of either side of the middle bit. And then we're going to take our bits of wool. Now, you don't have to cut a length off. You can just keep it on, on the ball. So I'm going to go two at a time because it's just quicker. And what I'm going to do is wrap them round the the tongs, is that what we call it, of the fork? Tines? Oh, I don't know what they're called. But try and keep this other middle bit out of the way. So don't have to tie a knot or anything, you just go for it. So I'm just going to go like this. So you can go all the way around. Do you see what I'm doing? Just going around whilst keeping that first bit of string just sort of out of the way. So keeping going, keeping going. Now, what do we know about beads? Well, they produce honey, which is lovely. Um, and they do that by going from flower to flower and taking the nectar from the flowers. And then we can get the honey from the beehives, can't we? But what they do have is a bit of a defense, don't they? And they have that bee sting as their line of defense. And what happens to the bee if it's Stings. Now it's only going to sting you in defense because it thinks it's under attack and it needs to protect the other bees in their beehive. So if it does sting you, ow, it hurts a bit, but also the bee dies, isn't it? Because it can only sting you once because then it would die. And that to me is a great example from the bee of what sacrificial love is. I'm keeping going with my winding this round till we get it nice and bumpy. So sacrificial love, the bee is literally laying down its life to protect the other bees. There we go. And that also reminded me of a time oh, a few months ago when we were going for a, a lovely walk up at the lake up by Cottrell Park at the top of Chapel Lane, if you've ever been there. And unfortunately, young Mr. Gethin stumbled across a wasp's nest. And in the midst of Gethin being surrounded by wasps, I and Mr. Jones had to go in and rescue Gethin and take him out of this being stung lots and lots of times. But in doing that, we knew that we would get stung and it would hurt us as well. But we put, obviously, get in before our own pain. But that, again, that's an example of sacrificial love. We were prepared, morning, Jan, we were prepared to um, go with pain, to go and save our son. So sacrificial love, just like with a bee, does come with a cost, doesn't it? There's pain involved, there's hurt involved. Now, I'm going to, I think that's probably enough. If you get it about that thick, you might want to keep going. But let's see. So what we do now, I'm just going to cut those ends. Don't have to do anything particularly with those. And now you want to make sure you hold those two bits that you had at the end. And hold on to those tight. And then slide this off your fork. Okay. And then... With those two ends, just pull it nice and tight and do a knot whoop, as tight as you can. This could all go disastrously wrong. Never try and do live 
across. Nice tight knot there, I'll do a third one. And then you get your scissors, and they'll need to be quite sharp scissors, so you might want a bit of help. And then when you've got all the, the loops, just cut through the end of those loops. And you'll start to see what happens. We are starting. Now be careful not to cut the tie that you made, otherwise it'll all fall apart and we'll have to start again. And to bring it back up with me. So you start to cut away all those loops, as I say, and we start to get our B. Well, now you can either <laughs> keep it, give them a little bit of a trim, keep it like that so you've got your kind of B wings with your B body and you can stick some googly eyes on the front or you can just go the full hog and just turn it into a lovely fluffy bug by cutting through all of them and basically what you've got is a very quick easy way of making a pom-pom. Here we go so these are my B pom-poms and we were when we think about the bee now, we can think about the sacrifice that a bee makes to protect others. And why am I thinking about that? Well, of course, yesterday we talked a little bit about how sin separates us from God and how sin is when we fall short of God's standards. But of course, at Easter, we had Jesus showing us the ultimate sacrificial love, didn't he? So this is a little bit like what it's like for us. Okay, so imagine this is us. Okay, so clear as we were designed to be, but we all do fall short of God's standards. And that's when the sin comes into our life. And a sin, it's a bit like a black mark. So it changes us, doesn't it? It's a bit like a black mark on the register. You know when, I bet sometimes you're a little bit late. And if you're really late at school, you get a black mark on the register, don't you? You get that big fat zero. And Mrs. Matthews ain't gonna change it for you, is she? It goes on to your record and it's always there and you can't take it away. That cup of water. And so even if, you do something really good for the rest of the day and you've got gold stars and tokens and head teachers awards that black mark from being late that first time would still be there and you can't take it away and even now my my wonderful assistant holly is going to bring me a quick bit of water because i'm not organized enough to have it ready <laughs> she's doing a wonderful job trying not to spill it for me so as i say even if you do those good things you know throughout the day it still can't take you away that original sin that you had. Okay, but this is where Jesus comes into it. So Jesus' sacrificial love at Easter on Good Friday, when he died on the cross. Is so perfect and so complete that it can take away all of our sins, all those times when we've fallen short of God's standards. And I think that's something we really should be thankful for, isn't it? Sacrificial love. I bet some of you parents can probably relate to being a bit sacrificial at the moment. Have you, any of you gone without milk in your coffee because you're running low and you know your kids want it for, the, for their cereal? Or have you given up that last slice of toast so that they can have something? And we see that, don't we, with all our NHS workers at the moment and people doing deliveries, keeping the shops going. They are sacrificing. They're sacrificing maybe being able to spend time with their families or having to isolate from them and even their own health to do something uh, really important for the rest of us. And we show our appreciation, don't we? We've been drawing the rainbows. We've been doing the clap and um, the clapping on Thursday evenings. And that shows our appreciation. And it's the same for what Jesus did for us. We need to show our appreciation for what he did. And because it's there, it's there for us to take and to be thankful for and to accept freely. Now, can you imagine if in this situation now, we've got those scientists working really hard and they're gonna come up soon with a vaccination for this virus. And then 
everyone will be able to go back and live freely again, won't they? Can you imagine if you decided, oh, I don't really want that. Don't, don't think I want that. Like, you know, not really very grateful for that. It'd be a bit daft, wouldn't it? And it's the same with what Jesus has done for us. It's such a big sacrifice that Jesus made that it's really important that we do accept it. It's freely there for us to take. So that's my message today. It's going back to the fact that even all those sins that we do, even the little ones, all add up, but they can all be taken away and we can be made whole again. So I'm going to go back to that song that we learned first, first week about God's love to the Flintstones tune. God's love is the best love. We're seeing lots of acts of love at the moment and that sacrificial love, just like the bee, laying down his life to protect the others. Jesus laid down his life. Right, I'm going to, hopefully you remember the words from last time. God's love is the best love that the world has ever known. Deeper than the ocean, it's the love that God above has shown. I will see you again tomorrow for what will be the last assembly for this term, but we'll be back again after the Easter holiday. So stay safe, see you tomorrow, and see you soon.